Hey everybody, this is Dev Biker, and I'm here to talk to you about IQ for the link user. And uh, we're going to go ahead and get started by taking a look at how we configure the performance parameters uh, for our uh, liquid coolers, our all-in-one liquid coolers. Uh, in my case, I have the H115i Pro, um, but it will work the same way for the other coolers as well. Um, and the uh, Commander Pro, how we configure our fan curves, how we configure our pumps. Uh, so as you can see, I'm here in IQ, and I'm actually on the device screen for the H115i Pro. It gives me a little image of the very pretty pump head uh, on the H115i Pro. The, the whole Pro series looks really, really cool. You can see it's got funky rainbows, and that's all nice. We'll talk about the color schemes and that kind of stuff later. Uh, right now, we're going to talk about how we adjust the fan curves. So, a couple of things, right? So, with the pumps, uh, all the pumps uh, kind of act this way. You have a couple of options for the pump speeds, right? It'll be quiet, it'll be balanced, it'll be extreme, it'll be zero RPM mode. Um, the zero RPM mode really applies to the fans. And, and so, you have limits on what you can do with those. So, you can't just apply anything that you want to the pumps. This is the same way in Link. Um, it's not a, a software restriction from what I understand. It's actually functionality of the hardware itself. So right now you see that uh, my pump is on balanced mode. Uh, you can see that right there. It says it's on balance. If I want to set it to extreme, I will come over here and click extreme and then select the pump. And it will apply the extreme profile. You see the RPMs just jumped up uh, to around 2800 RPM, 2850. Uh, as I put it on the extreme profile. Um, if I want to put it on quiet, click on quiet. Again, the same thing. I click on the setting and then I apply it to the device. All right, we see that it, the pump RPM went down uh, and I'm going to go ahead and put balance back on uh, because honestly with my setup in my case, I can't hear it when it's on balance. Uh, and I've actually noticed that balance does make a difference. Uh, quiet doesn't cool the processor. Uh, quite as well. Um, so I like to keep it on balance. I can't hear it anyway, so that works. Now, more interesting, and what a lot of us have really spent probably a good deal more time doing, is configuring the fan curves. And the fan curves are going to work the same way. Um, you're going to uh, create the fan curve and then you're going to apply it to the fan. Now, this is one of the inherent differences in the way IQ handles fan curves versus the way Link handled fan curves. Uh, in Link, when you configured a fan curve, you configured that fan curve for the fan itself, and the fan curve was attached to the fan itself. And it didn't really exist as a separate entity or a separate thing that you could work with. In IQ, uh, the fan curve is this separate thing that exists all by itself. And then that fan curve is applied to a particular fan. Now the fan curve itself will actually be associated with the device. So in this case, you see I have this LL push, LL push experimental, HD pool, 100% forced. Um, these fan curves are actually associated with the H115i, um, and then they get applied to the individual fans. Now you'll see I've labeled my fans. Instead of fan one and fan two, I've labeled them pull and push. Uh, because what I've done is I've configured my fans in push-pull. Uh, I have, um, I think it's HD fans uh, doing the pull, LL fans doing the push, because I like all kinds of pretty lights. It makes me happy. Uh, so that's how I've got mine done. You may have the ML fans on yours, in which case you would only need two. Um, but you can go ahead and you can label these, uh, just like you do kind of in Link, right? You can give them custom names, right? So if you double-click on them, uh, in this screen, you can uh, label them, change their names. In this case, I changed it to Pool HD, and I'll change this one to Push LL. And you can actually change the name of any of the different things that you see in here. I could change the name of the pump if I wanted to, so that it's no longer pump, but I can say H150i pump, which I think is much more descriptive. Um, and then temp, I can go ahead and make that H150i temp, right? Because I like to make things very, very specific. 
So there we go. We've gone ahead. We've done our names. Now let's look at the, the different fan curves. And you see I now have balance applied to everything because I had balance selected uh, here on the left. And as I clicked on those devices to change the name, um, that's what actually applied the balance uh, fan curve to it. <laughs> Which uh, this is this is one of the things and in, in, uh, that does take some getting used to and as you can see I haven't fully gotten used to it. We select our fan curve, then we apply it. We select our fan curve, then we apply it. <clears throat> now if you look here, you can see in this fan curve, um, very similar uh, in a lot of ways to the link fan curves. Um, you can see I have different temperature points. Uh, we can click on these temperature points. We can use the arrow keys on our keyboard to move them up and down, uh, side to side, all right? And that's certainly one way to edit them. But you'll also notice here on the lower left, uh, we have the ability to actually just directly type in what we want the value to be, right? So if I want this to be 38%, uh, it goes ahead and increases it to 30, 38%. I can make this... 28 Celsius, and that goes ahead and moves it out uh, just a little bit. Um, if I make a mistake or I don't like what I've done or something crazy has happened, um, I can go ahead and hit revert, and it sends it back to where it was before I got started with this mess. Um, so that's pretty cool. Um, if you do have a couple of pre-built curves, so I'm going to go ahead and, and select my push experimental uh, fan curve and kind of show you what these guys look like. Um, so we have one fan curve that's going to give you kind of a quiet curve, right? So notice this doesn't really go up over 55%. You're going to have a hard time hearing that, particularly with the L ML fans that ship with these coolers. Um, we have, uh, I think this would be balanced, or maybe this one's extreme and this one's balanced. Um, I'm not really sure. It's kind of hard to really very honestly tell which is which um, but these will give you kind of default fan curves to get started with um, you certainly don't have to do them uh, just like everything else you want to make sure that you set the sensor uh, so in this case it's set to the h150i temp right is going to be the control source for that particular fan curve now as i mentioned um, these fan curves are actually associated with our uh, with our device and they're not actually tied to a profile, so they really are associated with the device. So if I come in here to my profiles, I only have one profile right now. I'm going to uh, go ahead and uh, actually just create a new profile, right? So profile two. So if I go into profile two um, and I don't have any lighting enabled in profile two and check the performance, you see that even though the default settings for profile two, because I didn't specify anything, is quiet it still has the names for my fans right but we would certainly expect that um, but you'll also see all of the fan curves that i've configured are in here as well right so here's our ll push so i can actually go ahead and very quickly apply the fan curves uh, that i want um, in this profile and uh, they go ahead and get applied now, what do you think happens if I come in here and change, say, uh, let's change this this LL push experimental fan curve, right? So we have a custom curve in here, and I'm just gonna I'm gonna use one of the quick curves and change it like that, right? So I'm not applying it to any pump. But if I switch my profile, go back to this one, and then go to my LL push experimental, you'll see that that fan curve is actually, like I said associated with the device um, and not just the profile so you can set up and you can configure your profiles um, uh, however you want and then you configure the fan curves and apply them in the profiles as appropriate now if you have a fan curve and you want it to be applied to all profiles that's very easy to do you can just come to this hamburger menu and in the hamburger menu if you have multiple profiles you'll have this option to copy to all profiles uh, right there and that will go ahead and uh, copy um, that particular setting, that particular association of a fan curve uh, to the fan to all of your profiles. And let me actually set that back to uh, HD pool, which is what I want it to be, and copy that to all my profiles and I'm done.
All right, so uh, that's a quick look at uh, how the fan curves work with the um, H150i Pro. Let's go ahead and take a quick look at how the fan curves work with the Commander Pro. Now with the Commander Pro, they're going to work in a very, very similar fashion. Um, they're going to be under the performance section, right? You're going to create your fan curves just like you did uh, with the H150i. Um, and those fan curves are going to be associated with the Commander Pro. Um, when you select a fan curve, uh, you'll apply it to a particular fan by clicking on that fan. Um, and it will go ahead and apply that fan curve for uh, the current profile. Um, Fan curves uh, will also be associated with particular sensors. So in this case, the Commander Pro uh, mid-case sensor right here. Uh, so that's actually one of the temperature sensors on the Commander Pro. That's kind of in the middle of my case. Um, I like to associate um, my fan curves with those different temperature sensors. Now, just like in Link, um, in the Commander Pro, when we configure the fan curves, we're actually configuring for target RPMs. Um, and so instead of uh, doing percentages. So that's one thing you need to be aware of. And, and one of the things that you'll have to watch out for is that it is going to try to um, uh, target um, a, a particular uh, fan speed. Um, and what you'll want to do typically is uh, set a fan to 100%. So you see I have that 100% forced uh, fan curve. And I'll do that to get a feel for the max speed of that actual fan. I'll set my top range and then work my way back from there. Now with Link, it was often, um, I felt extremely frustrating. Uh, to actually configure some of these fan curves, right? Because you have the, these wide RPM ranges um, and the temperatures, and it was really hard to get it just right. With IQ, because we have the ability to just type those values in, it actually makes it a good deal easier uh, to work with the, the fan curves in, in IQ. So uh, there we go. That is a quick overview of how to work with fan curves on both the uh, Corsair um, Hydro Series coolers and the uh, Commander Pro. This has been Dev Biker. Thank you for joining me. And uh, I hope you stay tuned for some of the other vi videos that I'm going to be doing for uh, going over IQ for Link users.